This morning we are on our way to a little local breakfast place called Farm to Table. Farm to Table, which Tom saw on Google, but we've also just had recommended to us by our hotelier, and he said that um, all of the produce there is like locally grown and stuff. So I'm hoping it should be really good. It's all kind of like health foods and smoothie bowls, things like that. So should be good getting our like yoga hippie <laughs> peace love on oh yeah doing and as the locals do doing as the locals do and it's sunny this morning which is a relief so hopefully that sticks around for at least the next few hours because we're hoping to cycle over to two of the locals to know so we can speak to them Pushing on in the darkness, a termination got away. She punched the hole in the night time. She knew. This is a very good breakfast menu. <laughs> it is a great breakfast menu. So we are at Farm's Table, and I went for the seasonal smoothie bowl. Which looks amazing. Mango and banana, I think she said it was, isn't it? Yeah, mango and banana. Great. I've gone for the omelette of the day, which is mushroom and spinach and lots of other vegetables. She was like, Are you hungry? Because it's big. <laughs> I actually gave me some water. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. Right, we've had breakfast. It's about 11 a.m., and we're now going to hop over to grab some bikes and hopefully cycle over to the lake to the closest cement to us which are about a 15 minute cycle ride right away so it should be nice the weather's holding up for us at the moment so all good a cenote is a natural pit or sinkhole as made as the result of a collapse and they're plentiful in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Mayans believed them to be an entrance to the underworld so they were often used for human sacrifices and as a result of this many human bones and important artifacts have been found in the cenotes. The first cenote that we visited was the crystal cenote. It was local to us just a short 20 minute bike ride away and it's 120 pesos to enter. And although it isn't the clearest water of all the cenotes in Tulum, it is one of the most fun with a great jumping platform. How'd you find the cycle here? It, it was good. It was quite um, relaxing actually. Took it a little, as a leisurely cave. It's pre pretty much just directly straight from our hotel here. Mm. So it was and a there's nice... always a cycle lane, which is quite nice. The Mexicans seem to take their cycling quite seriously. And it was only 200 Mexican pesos for... Pesos? Yeah. Pesos. Yeah. Pesos. <laughs> Did you bring the dining masks? Tom! This is a classic Tom move. He would genuinely forget his head if it wasn't screwed on. I had everything. <laughs> We've just finished up at the cenote. Or cenote. We're still not 100% sure. <laughs> um, the other one was unfortunately closed because of the rain. It's been flooded, but this one was still open. It's the less clear of the two, but it had a big diving board, which Tom was enjoying. Yeah, I love jumping off and stuff. <laughs> I jumped off once, which I'm proud of myself for, but I'm not a huge fan of deep water, so that wasn't really my bag. It was so deep. It was really deep, wasn't it? Yeah, like... I mean, you can see to the bottom and you're like, oh, it doesn't look so deep, but then you get in and you're like, shit, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty deep. Maybe 30 metres? There was a diver going in when we were in there, so, yeah, and there was, there was a guy over there who was just obviously about to start a dive with a woman, and, I mean, he obviously spends so much time underwater with a regulator in his mouth that he does has to do a lot of talking when he's up above the air because he was like non-stop he, he was implying that there is a cave system that goes all the way across the road to the other cenote. to the other cenote <laughs> and that there's a human leg bone down there and no one knows how it got down there or why it's down there and why it's just the leg bone so i was listening with quite a lot of interest to him he was talking about some like things that can go wrong during diving i was like wow this is not making me feel great <laughs> for the potential dive we've been thinking about doing in cancun but we saw a bit of a grey cloud, so we've decided to pack in for now, cycle back to our hotel, and hopefully down by the seafront it'll be a bit clearer and we can go to the beach.
because we've ended up in quite a different place to where we thought we were going to be. We thought us, our hotel has two sister hotels which we have access to the beach clubs for. One of them is like nice, quiet, the other one has, as you can hear, house music playing. <laughs> Um, we left you saying that we were going to cycle to the beach and it was supposed to be a 25 minute cycle. It turned out to be much closer to an hour along dirt tracks. Very bumpy, you can imagine how much that hurt. So um, we arrived sweaty and disorientated and very confused. And we thought well, there's no point cycling further down the beach than necessary and we just ducked into the EDM house music one. So I'm sorry if you can't hear me but we've had some lunch, we've had some cocktails and yeah, we are sweet messes, but fruity drinks are making it better. Yeah, we we made a grave error, but it's okay now because look at this. Paradise found, you guys. White sand, clear turquoise seas, fluffy clouds, not a storm cloud in sight. So, unfortunately, we are going to have less time here than we planned because we have to cycle back. It's going to take us an hour, we've got to cycle back in time to pick up our car hire, so it's going to be tricky, but we're going to go in the sea now and hopefully we'll be able to get some nice footage on the GoPro, so see you on the flip side. After being royally screwed over by Google Maps and having to cycle over an hour to reach the beach, we were saddle sore and pretty sweaty, but thankfully our hotel's sister hotel, Beach Club Coco Limited had good food, good cocktails, and a beautiful, stunning sea view on offer. So we were able to chill out, relax, get some food, refuel, rehydrate. Look at this amazing bap I ate. It was so good and had amazing mojitos as well. And then we got in the sea for the first time, crystal clear Caribbean sea, and it was definitely needed before the long long cycle back over very bumpy terrain i would definitely say double triple check with your hotels or your resorts about how long the bike rides are going to be because google maps was just not playing ball with us at this point likely the blurriest footage of me ever but we are gonna have tacos from a local place that's been recommended to us by the guy on our front desk at our hotel and also Tom saw it recommended online as well but we Tom went and picked them up and brought them back here so we can eat them by the pool because we had a bit of a disaster on the way back from the beach um, I feel like holidays with me and Tom are always like 10% damage control and we were so tired when we got back and I'm so sore from the bike ride. I think we just needed like an evening of relaxing. So we're eating tacos by the pool. It's gonna be good. I'm excited. So excited, it smells so good. I mean, the people queuing at this place was ridiculous and it better be good. <laughs> it was super cheap, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I think like we got Four, ta four tacos and guacamole and they, they gave us like chips and dips and stuff. It was like 110 pesos, that's like four pound fifty, five pounds. Four pound fifty, amazing. Tom did a very scary thing this morning. I drove in Mexico. <laughs> he drove in Mexico. After the disaster that was yesterday with the bikes, we decided to try a different mode of transport and hire a car. So the car arrived at our hotel, super easy actually, wasn't it? Yeah, it turned up last night, um, paid, showed him I was able to drive, do the license. Uh, and now we've got it all of today, and he's actually gonna come pick it up tomorrow morning. So it's really handy for us. Really easy. So we drove to the Grand Note, which is bucket list material people. This is what we came here for. This has been on my Pinterest board for years, so it's gonna be good. Um, and then, yeah. Then, oh, this afternoon we're driving along to the ruins, which are just down that road, down there. So, this one's going to be good. The Grand Sonotes Crystal Turquoise Waters have been on my bucket list for years, so this was such a special trip for me. The Grand Sonote is undoubtedly one of the most famous sonotes. You see it all over Instagram and Pinterest, and it's open 9am to 5pm daily. It costs 180 pesos to enter, plus 30 pesos if you want to rent a locker. It's filled with wildlife such as turtles, beautiful fish, and the caves are even home to bats too. 
It reaches depths of about 30 foot in the caves and you can rent snorkeling equipment if you want to. I recommend arriving early because it got really, really busy even though Tom and I were there before it even opened and outside of peak season, you can see all of people's legs dangling around in some of these clips to show you kind of just how busy it actually was. I also want to kind of drop a note here to say that as you can see we were snorkeling and swimming right down into the depths and afterwards we did get kind of sick so notes are you know for the most part still moving bodies of water and they aren't the cleanest despite looking gorgeous think of all the, the wildlife they're home to and we both got terrible head colds after the visit to the Grand Sonote. So I would just recommend being slightly careful when you're visiting about not swallowing any water whilst you're there and showering off well afterwards. But other than that, I was so impressed and I really, really will treasure this memory for a really long time. We're at the Grand Sonote and this is the turtle zone. There's no swimming in this zone, but hopefully we can spot a turtle. So we are trekking through the jungle actually um, to Koba, which are the oldest Mayan ruins in the area. We're currently trekking to the, what did I say it was called? I think it's Natok Mall or something Natuk like that. Natok Mall, um, which is their really big temple. Over 190 stairs up to the top, but you can actually climb this one. You can't climb the temple in Chichen Itza, so we thought we'd head to this one today while we had the car, so we can climb up to the top see the views, um, walk the steps of the Mayans, see where they probably did some human sacrifices as well. <laughs> but to get to it you have to do a one kilometre walk through the jungle which is very exciting. I don't think I've ever been in a jungle before. We're not feeling our best though. Um, it's been a long couple of days and we were swimming in the snow this morning and where you swim in fresh water and you don't have the buoyancy of the salt water, it's like way more of a workout than swimming <laughs> in the sea is. So we're pretty we are tired. Exhausted. <laughs> we're exhausted. And post the drama of all the rain on day one, my converse are still soggy. So I'm actually having to trek in flip flops. So pray for me walking up the temple steps in these. Okay, Tom flaked out on climbing up because he's not feeling great. I'm about halfway up now. Very hot, very sweaty, legs are hurting, and the view is insane, guys. Look, this is all jungle. Jungle. So scary. So scary. <laughs> On we go. Koba's claim to fame is that it has the largest network of stone causeways. Effectively, these are ancient roads. Over 50 have been discovered, but mysteriously, no one knows how the Maya transported goods along these roads. Scientists believe they knew of the existence of the wheel, but there's actually no evidence to suggest that they used them. The largest pyramid, which you can see me climbing here, is in the centre of the Mayan city and is 42 metres tall and over 120 really steep stone steps up to the top. There's one sort of rope thing in the middle that you can grab onto, but it's a pretty tricky climb and going down is even more scary than going up. But I'm pretty pre pleased with myself and proud of myself for doing it because it was amazing jungle views from the top. It is about 5 p.m. now. We are heading over the road to one of the top-rated restaurants in Tulum called Humo. Um, it's supposed to be quite a like cool vibe with some Mexican food. Um, so we're heading there now. Tom hasn't eaten all day because he hasn't feel, been feeling well. He's been asleep for the last couple of hours. So hopefully he needs to get some food in him. So hopefully this will be just a ticket. They also do cocktails, so I'm excited by that. I had tried a mojito vino cocktail earlier in our hotel bar, which was really nice. So I'm excited to have some more of those. Mojitos, one of my favorite cocktails. White wine, also one of my favorite drinks. So the two combined was great. I'm wearing a little black bodysuit, these leopard print shorts, and my pink heels, 
which I succeeded in putting on the wrong foot. So that was great. We were off to a good start. Um, yeah, our last night in Tulum, which we're really sad about, but excited to head to Cancun tomorrow. After you. <laughs> Go slam, she's leaving. He said you're running away. She looks over her shoulder. There's nothing left there to say. You think I cry my heart out? You never knew me anyway. She straps a bag on her backseat, fires up her BSA.